having a worldview that has repercussions. That people understand where they're going. And it's gotten so crazy in this country, we can't even interact anymore because everybody's too sensitive. Too sensitive nowadays, yes. I went to a Chinese restaurant. I love Chinese food. I love Chinese people. I love China. <laughs> I'm a China fan. <laughs> Old cult culture, they invented things, abacuses and gunpowder and good stuff. Stuff we need. <laughs> if it wasn't for them, our 4th of July's would have been a lot less festive. Let's face it, folks. It would be like a... T Woo! Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love Chinese people. I love Chinese food, so I went in to get some Chinese food, and I wanted to eat, and I was hungry. You know what they had for me to eat with? Chopsticks, and that's okay. It's a Chinese restaurant, but I said, you know what? I can't use them. I need a knife, a fork, and a spoon, and they didn't have any. Now, this is where I started getting a little testy. First off, do I look like I should be proficient with chopsticks? No, that's not against anybody. I don't know how to use them. I'm an American. I mean, matter of fact, every other ethnic restaurant I've ever been to has a knife, a fork, and a spoon. Every single one of them. And they've never expected me to be proficient in their cultural heritage. Never gone to an Italian restaurant yet, and they go, here's your spaghetti, but first, play the mandolin. <laughs> every restaurant always has a knife, a fork, and a spoon. You know why? Because we figured out that it's better than sticks. <laughs> That's why we gave up on sticks a couple thousand years ago. Cutlery is an upgrade. And I was upset, and the manager came over to me all indignant. We don't have silverware, we only have chopsticks, because we want to be authentic. <coughs> and I said, as a comedian, oh, you want to be authentic? Okay, let me get this straight, Bob. <laughs> I just walked into a Chinese restaurant in a strip mall in the United States of America. I walked through brushed aluminum doors. I was met by a blonde woman that set me down at a Formica table and gave me a plastic laminated menu. I'm about to order Chinese food cooked by that Mexican guy in the back. And when I finish eating, I'm paying with a credit card. But you think if you throw in chopsticks, suddenly I'm propelled into the Ming Dynasty. <laughs> what delusion are you living in? I mean, you're gonna have to give me a chance to suspend my disbelief. Why stop at chopsticks? I'm gonna need a whole I reject modern technology theme day so I can be prepared. I wake up to the sound of a rooster outside of my window. I look down at the sundial to see what time it is. Then, taking my clothes down to the nearest stream, I'll beat them with a rock to get them nice and clean. Then I'll come back in and call a girl up and see if she wants to go to a Chinese restaurant. But I won't use a phone. I'll use a telegraph. Or better yet, smoke signals. Then, I'll go pick her up in my best Roman chariot. And once we get over there to eat, I'm not gonna pay with a credit card. I'm going to pay with three hands, a woven blanket, and some beads. And then when we go home, I'm not walking to the door. I'm hitting her over the head of the club and dragging her by the hair. Now when you throw in chopsticks, I get it. <laughs> now, I love that joke. I'll tell you why. First off, I love watching the faces of all the people going, man, you're taking this chopsticks thing a little too seriously, don't you think? <laughs> And the answer is, yes. I'm taking it way too seriously. That's why it's funny. It's called satire, sarcasm, using a ridiculous scenario to make a finer point. Why do I tell you that? Because I did this show at a chapel at Pepperdine University. And then I was hired to do another show later on down the road, and I was fired. And I called the booker up and said, what happened? You've been fired. Why? You did the chopsticks joke. <laughs> and I said, yes, but if you listen to the chopsticks, it's just simply me making fun of the fact I can't use them. And I just figured, you know, we should be using Civil War right now. We're Americans. I'll never forget what the guy said. He said, yes, but you said that silverware was better than chopsticks. Now, I try to be honest, folks, I'm not perfect. I can make mistakes. My religion demands me to try to always be better and grow. And I thought about it and I said, you know what? I don't want to offend people. I did say that silverware was better than chopsticks because it is! Obvious 
Obviously, a knife, a fork, and a spoon is better than job six. Oh, you're just being ethnocentric. Obviously, a knife, a fork, and a spoon in tandem are better than job six. You're just being bigoted and intolerant and insensitive. Oh, for crying out loud. Here's a bowl of soup. Here's some chopsticks. Here's a spoon. Let's see who gets to the bottom first. <laughs> If you like to use chopsticks, fine. But if you think that everybody should learn how to use them and you don't understand why I'm so crazy, put a helmet on! <laughs> See, two kids got out of the show and wouldn't complain. They wouldn't complain. And I got fired. I'm not gonna tell you the ethnicity of these two kids. <laughs> but you can pretty much rule out their last name was Rodriguez. And that's okay. I mean, they have the right to do that. But here's why I bring it up. Because after the show, a young black man came up to me. He said, thank you for your show. It really made me think. Another guy came up to me and said, I'm a vegan. The most radical form of vegetarian. He said, I, I thought your animal rights stuff was funny. Another girl came up to me and said, hey, I'm going to start wearing fur now. Kind of joking. Another guy said, hey, you should be a libertarian. Another kid came up to me and said, will you come speak at our Young Republicans convention? Unsolicited. I had all these different ideologies, cultures, and religions, politics come up to me and tell me, thank you. A black guy, a vegan, a Republican, a libertarian, a girl. <laughs> Representing the whole of America and all the kids that never got to see a show and get to make their own choices because two people were offended by something that isn't offensive. I don't call that sensitivity, I'll call it censorship. And so a university that is supposed to be teaching kids all types of thought, even dissenting viewpoints, took the high road and fired me. Shame on you, Pepperdine. I'm not here, my friends, to hurt anybody's feelings. But if you are unable, let me tell you something. You want to truly know if you have an immature character, you can tell by this rule how difficult it is for you to laugh at yourself. That's just immaturity. And if you cannot discern the difference between somebody being malicious towards your ethnicity and somebody finding humor in the differences, put a helmet on! <laughs> We've got to laugh again. We've got to laugh again because we are different. I'd rather laugh about it than fight about it. You see, we used to be able to. We used to be able to.